Hello everybody, welcome to another video about the Lord of the Rings Living Card Game. In this video I'm going to be showing you a deck that I have been playing a lot recently. Uh, I think it's a really fun deck and surprisingly powerful when you get all the pieces into play. Um, it's a Dwarven Mining deck which is built around the idea of discarding cards with Zigil Miner and getting benefits for doing that while also keying into some of the other cards that Dwarves have got related to discarding stuff from the top of your deck. So if any of you know um, C-Stan's Everything Cost 2 deck, which is on RingsDB if you want to have a look at it, um, I really like that deck and it's a really fun deck to play. I think I took that deck through the Dream Chaser cycle and really enjoyed playing it. Um, but the idea is that you use Zigil Miner as your resource generating engine and all of the cards, or as many of the cards as possible in your deck, um, have the same cost. Uh, because Zigil Miner's ability is action, exhaust Zigil Miner, and name a number to discard the top two cards of your deck. If at least one of those cards has a cost equal to the named number, choose a hero you control. For each card that matches the named number, add one resource to that hero's resource pool. So by making all of the cards the same cost, what you do is um, increase your chances of consistently hitting um, cards that cost the same with Zigil Miner's ability and therefore giving you the um, capacity to generate a lot of resources quickly. So that's exactly what I've tried to apply to this idea of Dwarven Miners. Uh, I'm using a lot of two cost cards. I think 38 of the cards in the deck cost two and a further six benefit in some way from being discarded. I've got the Hidden Cash which gives you resources when it's discarded from the top of your deck. And I've got the Eridluin Miner, who's a three-cost ally who comes into play for free when he's discarded. So I think that's 44 cards. Most of the deck is keyed into this uh, idea of discarding stuff with Zigil Miner. And the others are either there for attack power or to key into the theme. We've got the Dwarf Pipe. Uh, response after a card is discarded from the top of your deck. Exhaust Dwarf Pipe to place that card on the bottom of your deck. So that very clearly... Uh, relates to the idea of discarding stuff with the miner and then putting it back on the bottom of your deck to keep your deck um, alive, if you like, and make sure there's stuff to discard with his ability. It's also quite useful in case you discard something that you want to see uh, later on in the game. If you want to see it again, you can put it back on the bottom of your deck with the dwarf pipe and make sure that you'll see it again later. So you might notice my hero lineup has given me a starting threat of 34. I've got Dane Ironfoot, Gandalf and Nori. I tried to make a dwarf deck without Dane Ironfoot. Originally this deck was Nori, Gandalf and Biffer, uh, but unfortunately it just didn't have enough questing power to get through difficult quests, so I went back to Dane. Um, the nice thing about Dane is that there are a few leadership attachments uh, related to dwarves which cost two. Um, you've got Narvi's Belt, Hardy Leadership, and the new Dwarven Shield. Um, all of which are in the deck, and all of which key into the idea of discarding stuff that all cost two. And then we've got Nori. He's not a hero I've played that much, so it's really nice to be able to use him. Um, but he helps to keep us afloat, make sure we don't threat out, because every time we play a dwarf character from hand, we can reduce our threat by one. And there are a lot of dwarf characters in this deck. I've uh, built it slightly differently to the normal kind of dwarven swarms. It's not what this deck is trying to do. Uh, I've used all of the dwarf allies that cost two. Uh, so there are a reasonable number of them. And anytime we play them, we can lower our threat. But also he keys in to Gandalf, uh, because we can play with the top card of our deck face up. And once per phase, you may play the top card of your deck as if it was in your hand. So that means if you play a dwarf with Gandalf's ability, you get to trigger Nori's response. Also, when playing a card in that way, Gandalf's considered to have the uh, four printed sphere icons, leadership, lore, tactics, and spirit. That means we can play off-sphere stuff, like the Burning Brand or Erebor Battlemaster, who's in the deck, Miner of the Iron Hills, uh, Ered Nimrace Prospector. I think I've got every mining-type dwarf in the deck. Uh, so it's quite thematic as well, as well as fun and strong. Um, but because we play with the top card of our deck face up as well, that very clearly keys into the Zigil Miner, we can always discard the top card of our deck with knowledge of its cost. Um, so if we see one there that costs one, two, uh, three, or zero, we can name the right number every time. So I won't go through every single interaction because there are a lot of different pieces in the deck, um, but I will say that when you play this, 
Uh, what you want to look for in your opening hand is a Zigil Minor because um, it doesn't have a way of getting these as consistently as the Everything Cost 2 deck. So really you want a mulligan for one of these guys. You can survive without them, um, but the deck moves that much quicker if you get it in your opening hand. The other card to look for is Gandalf's Staff, which happily I've got there on the top of my deck, so I know it's going to come. Uh, the reason for that is because when you've got Gandalf's Staff and a Minor, you can play the Staff onto Gandalf on turn 1, and then use its action to give a resource to Nori and play the Zigil Minor immediately, so your resource engine is online from turn 1, uh, which is really nice. Um, I'm going to take it up against Into the Pit, uh, so you can see how it works. Now this isn't the most difficult quest in the game, so I'm going to play it in Nightmare Mode. Um, I really like the connection to going into the mines to uh, get treasure, maybe. Um, I've also played this deck against Ruins of Belagost as well, which feels like a really nice thematic fit. Um, in Nightmare Mode, this quest is not the toughest Nightmare quest in the game, uh, by any means, but there's still a few things that make it tricky. Uh, one of which is this new forced effect. Uh, so it says, forced after Cave Torch exhausts, place one damage token on this card. Then if there are five or more damage tokens on this card, remove Cave Torch from the game. So you might remember the Cave Torch. Uh, it's gone action. We can exhaust it to place up to three progress tokens on a dark location. Uh, but when we do that, we have to trigger that forced effect. After Cave Torch exhausts, discard the top card of the encounter deck. If that card is an enemy, add it to the staging area. Uh, so typically I try to avoid using this as much as possible, but there are times when you must use it uh, for whatever reason. You might need it to travel somewhere, you might need it to place progress on a location that's going to cause you to uh, fail the quest. Uh, so you only get five goes with it. Um, that's the main thing to worry about. And there are some cards, there's one enemy in particular, um, that gets worse when the Cave Torch uh, is removed from the game. The other thing uh, that's tricky in the Nightmare Mode is that they have placed a much greater emphasis on dark locations. Uh, so I'm going to put this on Nori, that's who I'll play it on. Uh, there are different ways or more ways that the dark locations interact. They can add threat to one another. There's a card that can turn a non-dark location into a dark location. Uh, there's another card that gives them additional quest points. Uh, there's one that removes progress from dark locations. So can be very tricky. Um, sometimes this can be really straightforward, this quest. Other times you can get location locked quite fast. Um, so not a pushover by any means. So I'm just going to play this uh, so you guys can see how it works. Again, I think it's a really fun deck. Really encourage you to try it, especially if you like C stands, everything costs two. This deck will be right up your street. And there are lots of different interactions um, that mean it's a real kind of, not a head scratcher, but you do need to think about what you're doing while you play it. Alright, so this is going to be my second attempt at this quest. Um, I did an attempt with the hand you saw there in the introduction, but I made a massive mistake. Um, I was happily playing away, playing loads of dwarves, loads of cards, loads of cool stuff going off, and I suddenly realised that Bridge of Khazad Doom was the active location. And while that's the active location, players cannot play cards. So that was a massive mistake. So I'm going to try my best not to make that mistake in this game. So let's flip the Nightmare card and we'll do the setup. Search the encounter deck for Eastgate and Cave Torch. Put Eastgate into play as the active location. Have the first player attach Cave Torch to a hero of his choice. So we'll make that active. Um, it's immune to card effects. Players cannot optionally engage enemies and no engagement checks are made. Forced after Eastgate leaves play as an explored location, add first hall to the staging area. All right, so we're gonna put the Cave Torch onto uh, Nori. Set first tool and Bridge of Khazad-Doom aside out of play. Shuffle the encounter deck. So we're going to try to get through the east gate, into the first hall, and then across the Bridge of Khazad-Doom. When revealed, reveal one encounter card per player and add it to the staging area. Okay, patrol leader. Interesting. Uh, three threat. Uh, but he's not going to make engagement checks, so I don't need to worry about him just yet. Players cannot advance to the next stage of the scenario unless Bridge of Khazad Doom is in their victory display. Yeah, so we need to get through all three of these. All right, and as you can see, um, I've got a nice starting hand here. Um, I'm not going to mulligan it. Uh, actually, no, I didn't mulligan. Okay, so um, I've got Gandalf's Staff and Wizard Pipe, which is really nice. But I can see on the top of my deck, I'm about to draw Zigil Minor, which is perfect. So this is a, an ideal start in many ways. So let's begin. 
All right, I'm going to do the little combo I told you about in the intro. I'm going to play Gandalf's staff for two, and then I'm going to use it to give a resource to Nori, and I will play my Zigil Miner. And I'll lower my threat by one with Nori's response. Now, he's going to be two willpower because of Dane Ironfoot, and he's going to be three. We're up against three, which is not the best start. Um, I'm tempted to quest this guy, although he might die if I get dark and dreadful. Um, there's a low chance of it, and I'd like to put some progress on the east gate. Uh, so I'm going to quest for eight here and hope for the best. Reveal one. Zigil Mineshaft. Uh, so lucky I quested for eight because that's going to be eight threat. Um, but we've got an action, raise each player's threat by one to place one progress token on Zidral Mineshaft. I'm going to do that just so I can make some progress, and I don't want to get location locked here, because um, I don't have any location control. So I'm going to go up to 38. I've got loads of dwarves so I can keep uh, my threat down, and I will clear that. Uh, so that's going to put that back to three, and I'll get five progress on the east gate. Uh, he's not going to engage, so I will refresh. So I draw Erebor Battlemaster. I would quite like to play King Under the Mountain because I don't need that wizard pipe there. Um, so I'm going to give a resource to Dane Ironfoot with Gandalf's staff. And then I'll spend two and play King Under the Mountain onto Dane Ironfoot. And I'll use it to look at the top two cards of my deck. I can discard one and add the other to my hand. I will discard the wizard pipe because I don't need it. And I'll add Bilbo to my hand. Um, because he's on the top of the deck, I think I can safely mine. Uh, I might need the second card, but we can always get it back later. So I'm going to use my Zigil Miner, and I will say two. And I'll discard Bilbo and a hidden cache. Perfect. So I actually get three resources. One for Bilbo, because he costs two, and two from this hidden cache. So I think I will give one to Nori. And I can give the two from the hidden cache to somebody else. I think I'm going to give them to Gandalf. Um, and I will play... Let's see. If I play Bilbo, um, I could trade a card. I'm thinking about playing Bilbo and getting a pipe. So I'm going to get a dwarf pipe. But I kind of want that hidden cache to put it on top of my deck. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play the wizard pipe before I do this. And I'm going to exchange that hidden cache for probably this prospector. Another hidden cache there, three in a row, that's crazy. Um, so I'll put him there. I'm going to spend two on Bilbo. And after he enters play, I can search my deck for a pipe attachment and add it to my hand. So that's going to get shuffled back in. Uh, I'll get the dwarf pipe. Oh, Eridluin Miner on top, that's nice. Uh, so I can't afford any of this stuff now. I've got no resources left, so I will quest for eight again. Hopefully we place some progress. Reveal one card. Goblin Scout, so further three. So quite a lot of threat getting into the staging area here. Um, that's going to give us two progress, which is exactly what we need to clear the east gate. Perfect. Um, so that will be explored. And then we travel, uh, we add the first hall, sorry, to the staging area. So that has another two threat. So unfortunately, both of these enemies are going to come down. So I'm going to defend one with Dane, and this guy will probably be undefended. So there's no reason not to travel there, I think. I have to raise my threat by three, but my threat's already crazy high, so no problem. And then I'll engage both of these. So he comes down, and he's going to come down as well. Combat phase, give them shadow cards. I'll defend the patrol leader with Dane Ironfoot. Shuffle Shadow Dweller back into the encounter deck. Okay. So he's going to go in there, and that's going to do one damage to Dane, because he's attacking for four. And then this is undefended, unfortunately. Attacking enemy gets plus three defense this phase, not going to do anything. I'll put that one onto Nori. No attacks back, so I would refresh now. So on Octagon this is tricky, but in the refresh phase I'm going to use King Under the Mountain. Uh, exhaust it to look at the top two cards of my deck, add one to your hand and discard the other. So I look at these two. I will add Unexpected Courage to my hand and discard Erid Lewin Minor, which he, means he comes into play for free. And then we'll actually refresh on Oxcon, but it means this is now exhausted. Okay, so we need some way of dealing with these. So really I want to play an Erebor Battlemaster and get a couple more dwarves onto the table. 
I think I'm going to play my Dwarf Pipe. And I can... I can play him by putting him on the top of the deck with Gandalf. So I will... Let's see, I've got two Burning Brands. Not very helpful. Um, I think I just want to move through the deck a little bit. So I'm going to say one and discard the top two cards. One, two. So I get one resource. And I'll give that to Dane Ironfoot, I think. And then I'll use my Dwarf Pipe to place the Prospector on the bottom of my deck. Then I'm going to Wizard Pipe. And I'll swap that Dwarf Pipe for my Erebor Battlemaster. And I'll pay three to play him from the top of my deck with Gandalf. And I can lower my threat by one from Nori. And he gets plus one attack for each other dwarf ally I control. So I've got two right now. So he goes up to three. Uh, that's enough to kill the uh, Chud enemy. So that's fine by me. I don't think there's anything else I want to do here. Um, so I'm going to quest. There's nothing in the staging area. Uh, so I'll probably commit two, three, four, and maybe seven to the quest. I think that's more than enough. Reveal one card. Goblin Lurker. Cannot be option engaged. If the active location is a dark location, Goblin, Lur Goblin Lurker sorry, gets plus three attack and minus 40 engagement cost. It is not. It is underground. So he's going to add three. So we'll get four. One, two, three, four. And that will get rid of the first hole. Now the Bridge of Khazad Doom comes into play. I must remember that while that's active, I cannot play cards. So do I want to travel there? I don't think I will. I think I'll leave it for the moment and try and get some more willpower down and then I'll go there. Um, although saying that we are questing quite well. I think I'm going to go there and we'll try not to make that mistake. Let's put a token on it or something so that I uh, remember it. Combat phase, shadow cards. I'll probably get rid of this one with Gandalf's staff. Okay, didn't do anything anyway. So I'll defend that one with Dane. He is going to take one wound again. This one, I could defend it with Gandalf, but I can do six attack. Well, I can't kill him, so let's defend it. Nothing, so no damage, and then I'll do three and kill the Goblin Scout. And then we will refresh. So I cannot play cards, I'm not going to play anything here. Um, I can, though, use my Wizard Pipe to swap the Erebor Battlemaster for the Hidden Cache. And then I can use King Under the Mountain and look at the top two. I will discard the cash and add Arwen to my hand. And that will give me two resources because that was discarded from the top of my deck. So I will give those two probably to Nori, ready for next turn. And then I'll use my Dwarf Pipe and put the hidden cash on the bottom of the deck. So we're up against three. I want to get through Bridge of Khazad Doom. So we'll do two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whoops. And that ought to be enough, hopefully. Reveal one card. Burning Low. When revealed, each enemy and location currently in the staging area gets plus one threat until the end of the phase. Plus three if it's a dark location. Players may exhaust the Cave Torch to cancel this effect. So he's going to go up to four. I don't care about that. So I get six progress. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Nice. Victory display for that one. That means I can play stuff again now. He is not going to engage me because um, there's not an active location that's dark. So I will just defend this patrol leader. So again, I'm going to get rid of the shadow card, and I really want to get some healing down soon, or extra defense, uh, because Dane's now going to be three wounds, uh, so he's getting close to death. And here I could attack this guy for, let's see, one, two, three, four. Um, let's do it. We'll attack him for four. And any time he's dealt damage, or before he's dealt damage, discard the top card of the encounter deck. If the discarded card is an enemy, cancel that damage. Nope. So he's going to take one wound. All right, then we'll refresh. And now I'm going to play lots of cards, hopefully. So I would really like to find Narvi's belt. So I want to move through the deck a little bit. Um, so I'm going to say two and use my Zigil Miner. One two. There goes Narvi's Belt, the exact card I want. Um, but they were both cost two, so I will give those to Gandalf, I think, here. And I will use my Dwarf Pipe, because I can see Narvi's Belt is also on the top of my deck, to put the Blue Mountain Trader at the bottom of the deck. Then I'm going to Wizard Pipe, 
and I will swap Narvi's belt for Erebor Battlemaster. I'll play Narvi's belt onto Danarva for two, and then I will make him lure with Narvi's belt, and I'll spend two and play Burning Brand onto him. So now he's going to cancel all shadow effects for the rest of the game. Now I'm going to use Gandalf's ability, one, two, three, to play this Erebor Battlemaster from the top of my deck, I'll lower my threat by one. And he is going to be, let's see, four attack, and so is he. So we've got loads of attack power now. Now I've got some spirit resources left. I'm going to spend two on Arwen, and I'm going to use her response on Dane Ironfoot. So he's going to be four defense for the rest of the game. And I've got two left. I'm thinking unexpected courage, uh, because we may get some enemies very soon. So I'm going to play those on to, uh, that one onto Dane, sorry. And I'm thinking that's probably all I'm going to do. Um, I could have gotten this guy out, um, but we can do that next turn. Uh, there is a way I could get him off of the deck. Um, if the next card down is a hidden cache, uh, I could potentially play him. Let's have a look. Uh, there's one there. I think I recycled one of them to the bottom of my deck. I'm going to try. So we'll look at the top two. Oh, nice. So we discard that guy, and he comes to hand, so it was worth it. I get a free ally. Love it when that happens. It's one of the things that makes this deck really fun, especially if you use Zigil Miner and you get two of those guys at once. That's amazing. All right, let's go to the quest phase. So we're only up against three, and there are only two more progress tokens required. I know the next stage involves killing enemies. Uh, the Nightmare Quest adds a new... Um, stage to this. So I think I might as well just try and progress and we'll see what happens. Um, I will quest for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I would have thought that might be enough. Um, the worst we could get is a Zigil Mineshaft, I think, which would add five. So we should probably do a bit more. Uh, I will quest for another two. There we go. I reveal one card. Goblin Lurker, so three. So we get three progress. One, two, three. We go to the next stage. Goblin Ambush. So this is the Nightmare card. When revealed, the first player must search the encounter deck and discard pile for X Orc enemies and add them to the staging area, where X is one plus the number of players in the game. One of these choices must be Patrol Sentry and one must be Patrol Leader if able. So we've got one of them out, but I think there's two of them. Uh, so let's have a look. There's a patrol leader, and a patrol sentry is one of the glowing dudes. Radioactive guys, they look like. Shuffle that. Okay. Uh, it was staging area, right? Oops. Discard the card by mistake. Where'd it go? Bring it back. Uh, yeah, add them to the staging area. Okay. So, X... Progress tokens required. X is one plus the number of players in the game, so two here. Uh, forced. After an enemy is defeated, place one progress on this stage. Progress cannot be placed on Goblin Ambush except by the above effect. So we need to kill these guys. Luckily, we have a bunch of Battle Masters. So they are going to automatically engage me. Uh, nothing I can do about it. And these guys are not going to engage because they're 50 engagement cost and there's no dark location, which is... Uh, uh, nice. So here, they're all for attack. Um, I'm going to have to defend one with Gandalf, I think. So I will discard this shadow card, defend that one with Gandalf. He's attacking with four, so Gandalf takes a wound. And then I will defend both of the remaining two with Dane. He is for defense because of Arwen. And both of these shadow cards are cancelled. Raise your threat by two and nothing. So no damage on him. Now the battle masters are one, two, three, four, five apiece. So I think I will just guarantee myself a kill and get rid of the patrol sentry, um, who needs eight to kill him. So they will attack him for ten. He's dead. Get one progress on there, and there's nothing else to do this round. So I will refresh and go to the next turn. Okay, Bilbo on top of the deck. I don't want him. Uh, I don't need him. So I think I'm going to mine here, and I will say two. We'll go one, two. Gandalf Staff already got that as well, so I'll give two resources to Nori. I will 
use both of those to play another Zigil Miner. Lower my threat by one. It's two willpower. And I think I'll use my... I could play my Dwarf Pipe. Um, so I think I'll do that. Play that onto Dane Ironfoot. That just put the Battle Masters up to six attack apiece. And I'll use this Zigil Miner and say two. One, two. So lose unexpected courage, but we get another two resources. I will put those onto Dane. And then I'll use a Dwarf Pipe to place that on the bottom of the deck. And then I think I'm going to play the Dwarven Shield. Although I do like the idea of getting a little bit more questing power. Um, I'll have a look at the top two cards with King Under the Mountain first. Okay, Blue Mountain Trader or Gandalf Staff. Well, I'll throw that one away and take him to hand. And I may as well recycle that just to keep the deck going. And then I will probably... Let's see. We're up against six. We can't place any progress anyway. Um, but these guys are going to get slaughtered by the Battle Masters. So I think what I'll do is Wizard Pipe, Narvi's Belt, and swap that. And then we'll spend two to play this guy. Lower my threat by one. Two willpower. And then I'll spend two on the Dwarven Shield. So Dane will now be five defense. And that's everything I'm going to do. So we're up against six threat. I'll quest for two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the worst we could add is five, I believe. So we will do another two. Eleven. And I'll probably do another... I'll do another two, just to be absolutely sure. Watchful Eyes. Okay, didn't need those at all. Uh, when revealed, the first player attaches Watchful Eyes to one of his heroes. Counts as a condition attachment with the text Limit 1 per hero. Forced, if attached hero is exhausted at the end of the combat phase, reveal one card from the encounter deck and add it to the staging area. Sure, I'll put it on Gandalf. No threat added, but no progress can be placed on there. So we'll go to the combat phase. Shadow cards, I just defend both of these with Dane. Cancelled. Doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything anyway. And then I can come in and I can attack that one with one Battle Master. Now, is he still six? He's one, two, three, four. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven now. Uh, so I'll attack this guy uh, with him. When he's dealt damage, discard top card of the encounter deck. It's not an enemy, so he dies. And we get one progress, and we immediately go to stage three. A way up. Uh, heroes do not collect resources during the resource phase. If the players defeat this stage, they win the game. So we just need to quest through now. We don't care about that resource collecting thing because of our Zigil Miner. Uh, and then I can do one more attack. I'll attack the next patrol leader with this battle master and discard top card. Not an enemy, so he dies as well. Perfect. Um, I'm not going to do anything else. Refresh. So this has been quite a nice run. Um, I really just wanted to play a run where you got to see how the deck worked rather than playing it up against something that was ridiculously difficult. Um, but I think in, I'm going to make um, a few more videos where I'll play this against some more difficult quests uh, so you can see what it can do. Um, here I'm going to Wizard Pipe. I'm going to draw that Unexpected Courage, or not draw it, swap it, sorry, for Miner of the Iron Hills. And then I will give Gandalf a resource and I will spend two to play him from the top of the deck. Lower this by one, discard Watchful Eyes. And he gets a resource. Uh, not a resource, sorry, a willpower. It'd be interesting if he was getting a resource. And then I've played Hardy Leadership. I would like to play Unexpected Courage just to see this through. Uh, they don't get resources, actually, so that's a mistake. Um, I need to take that back. Let's see. Uh, he would not get a resource. He wouldn't get one. He wouldn't get one, which means I couldn't play that either. Uh, so I will... What do I have on top of the deck? I had Unexpected Courage on top of the deck. I'm going to have to... Let's see. Use Zigil Miner... Uh, so they go back and say two, one, two. So I get two resources on Gandalf. Then I'll do the same thing I was going to do anyway. So I'll do that, do that, and that discards that condition. There we go, I fixed it. That's my fault for losing concentration for a second. He gets his resource or his willpower. 
Now then, let's quest. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 16 will do. Up against 6. Reveal one card. Narrow Fisher, it's doomed 1. So we're not out of here yet. Um, each dark location in play gets plus 2 quest points. While Cave Torch is ready, progress cannot be placed on Narrow Fisher. So we're going to get 7 progress tokens. There's nothing to engage or kill. Um, I'm tempted to go there uh, just to get the threat out of there and I can use the cave torch next turn. Although actually if there's no dark location I can't actually exhaust it so I think that's a bad idea. I'm just going to leave it in the staging area. Um, I could use my Zidral Miner to get more resources so why not? Uh, I will say one, one, two, so I get one resource and I'm going to give that to Dane. And then I will use my Dwarf Pipe to put him on the bottom of the deck. Will of the West coming up. Um, so I'm going to use Gandalf Staff to give him a resource and then we will refresh. And I'll take away their resources this time. One, two, three. Okay, Arwen on top of the deck. We don't need her, so I'm going to say two. One, two. Two more resources can go to Nori. I'll play the Blue Mountain Trader. Blow my threat by one. And there's an Eridluin Miner there, so I'll use King Under the Mountain, look at the top two. He's discarded. I'll take that one to hand, fair enough. Another ally there for free, why not? Erebor Battlemaster on top of the deck. So I think here I can... I want to discard this from the top of the deck to get three resources. I'll pay two for Hardy Leadership. And I will probably trade the Battlemaster for Hidden Cash. And I will say zero. So I get three resources and I will put this Zidral Miner on the bottom of my deck. And I'll give those to probably Dean. One, two, three. I have a feeling I should have used this Dwarf Pipe as well. Uh, so I'll get rid of that, or exhaust it rather. And I'll do Narvi's Belt, make him Lore, 1, 2, and I'll play Warden of Healing. Now then, questing. We're going to be up against 9 threats, so I'll commit as much as I can. I'll do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, probably 20. That should be enough to win. Reveal one card. Ooh, Dark and Dreadful. When revealed, deal 1 damage to each exhausted character, 2 damage instead if the active location is a dark location. Okay. Well, because I've got Hardy Leadership now, that means my Zidral Miners will not die because they've got one extra hit point. So I don't lose anybody from that, which is really nice. And we get 11 progress, so we absolutely smash a way up. We get to 18 and we win. There we go. That wasn't the most difficult game ever, I have to say, but I really wanted to just show you uh, a playthrough of this deck working in the way it should and all the nice little combos you can get. Discarding these guys with King Under the Mountain or... Um, the Zidral Miner, trying to discard these, putting them on top of the deck, playing these guys with Gandalf, and then you may see there I've got Will of the West, that's uh, for when the deck eventually does run dry, which it will do. What turn are we on? We're on turn 7 or 8, I think? Turn 8. So when you get to about turn 10 or 11, usually the deck's empty. At that point you can Will of the West, refill it with probably 20 or so cards from the discard pile, and then keep um, using the Zidral Miners to gain resources and play as much stuff as possible. There we go, so I hope you like the video, I hope you like this deck, please please do try it, it's really fun to play. Um, it's much harder to play it when you're trying to speak everything aloud, so it can move a lot faster when you play it in real life. Um, let me know what you think about it anyway, and uh, I'm going to run it up against some tougher scenarios now. Um, so I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.